Hey there, I'm Apple Kreider with Investing Simple. In today's video, we're providing an in-depth look at the question of how to make money on M1 Finance. So with the rising popularity of investing apps like M1 Finance, there, there comes this question time and time again of how do you actually make money on this thing? So in this video, I'm gonna break down the three most common and kind of profitable methods for making money on the M1 Finance platform. So let's dive right on into it. And starting off, let's just give a brief overview of how M1 Finance actually works. So this is a commission free stock trading app that offers over 6,000 stocks and ETFs for you to purchase on their platform. They specialize in long-term investing, so it's not a platform for day trading. If you're looking for more of an active trading solution, we tend to recommend Webull for that, and we have a full review of that you can check out up here. But when it comes to long-term investing, M1 Finance is definitely one of the top dogs around. So on the platform, you're able to either build your own portfolio of stocks and ETFs, or you can choose from one of the expert build portfolios. So they've got a couple dozen of these things that are, are pre-built for you, whether it's like a target date fund, socially responsible investing, they've got a ton of kind of expert built portfolios that you can use absolutely for free, which is a huge plus to the M1 Finance platform. Most apps out there, brokerages, are gonna charge you a significant amount of money or fees every single year in order to use a pre-built portfolio built by experts, but with M1 Finance, there is no charge to do that. Now, one thing that I need to mention here before we dive into how to make money on M1 Finance is the unique pie structure that M1 Finance takes. So on many other investing apps, you kind of just go on there and you say, I wanna buy three shares of Apple stock and you do that. But with M1 Finance, it's a little bit different. So you're not just saying, I wanna buy X number of shares of stock. What you're doing is you're creating a pie. And within this pie, you, you create different slices and each slice represents a different stock or ETF. And then you decide, okay, I want this slice to rep represent 10% of my pie, 20% of my pie, 30%, whatever. And so you can say, I want to have a, a pie that is 20% Apple stock, 20% Walmart, 50% Amazon, and 10% Google or something like that, okay? And so you build this pie and that's, that's essentially how the M1 Finance platform works. And they automatically rebalance you to keep you at those percentages. So it's a really effective way to kind of automate, streamline your investing. So you don't have to stay on top of this stuff as much. You can kind of just set it and forget it. So that's how the M1 Finance platform actually works. Now let's talk about how to make money. So like I said, three main methods for making money on the M1 Finance platform. The first of which is investing in dividend stocks. So we have a whole video describing how dividends work on M1 Finance, because there's a little bit to it you gotta kind of keep in mind when you're investing in dividend stocks on the platform. So you can check that out up here. But a real quick breakdown of how dividends actually work. So large companies that are making significant cash every single year may decide to pay dividends to their shareholders. So people who hold stock in that company. That's because they want to reward those shareholders for investing in their company. And companies tend to do this when they're not so much in like high growth mode. Because when they're in high growth mode, they want to retain as much of that earnings as possible, reinvest it into their business and grow faster. But if a company is, is very well established, say they're like a utility company, these companies tend to pay significant dividends to their shareholders because they're not so much focused on high growth. They have a business, they're cash flowing, and so they're just focused on paying those dividends out to shareholders. So you as a shareholder on M1 Finance can own stock in these companies, receive a dividends on a typically quarterly basis. So four times a year, you're getting a dividend check cut to you based on your ownership in the company. So the more shareholders of stock in that company you own, the bigger the dividend check they are going to write you. And so you can choose to purchase these stocks on M1 Finance. Now, when you receive these dividends, you've really got two main options of what you wanna do with them in the M1 Finance platform. The first of which is just take it as cash. You know, take the cash, uh, transfer it out to your bank account, go down to the store and buy yourself something nice. Okay, that's your first option. But your second option is to reinvest those dividends through the dividend reinvestment plan that M1 Finance actually offers. And this is gonna allow you to take advantage of something called compound interest, which is essentially the idea that your interest builds upon your interest. So say you own a $100 stock that pays a 10% dividend. So if you took that as cash, you'd get a $10 dividend. That's great or you could take that $10 dividend, reinvest it back into these stocks. Now you own $110 of that stock. The next time the 10% dividend comes around, you're now getting $11 because you have $110 get 10% of that, so $11 instead of your 10. So if you choose to reinvest your dividends, your returns tend to go up over time in that compound interest fashion, or if you choose to just take the cash, then you can just go out, spend it at the store, and be on your way. Now method number two for making money on M1 Finance is the capital appreciation method. So essentially what you're doing here is buying low and selling high. So stocks tend to fluctuate in value, and if you buy on the low side, sell on the high side, you make that profit in the middle. So if you buy a stock for say $20, you sell it for $40, you just made a $20 profit on that stock. And that's exactly what you can do 
on and one finance in order to make some cash. So for example, if you bought Tesla stock one year ago and you held that through to today, you would have a serious gain on that stock. We're talking probably at least doubling or tripling your money just from holding that single stock. But that being said, not all stocks go up. And when you do invest in stocks, there's always that risk that your stock may go down in value. So you need to make sure you have a solid strategy in place. You know why you're buying that stock and you have a plan for what to do, whether the stock goes up or whether the stock goes down in value. Now, when it comes to making a plan for your investments, there are two kind of typical philosophies that people tend to follow when they're investing for capital appreciation. These tend to be either growth investors or value investors. And so a growth investor is gonna look for a company like Tesla that is like growing very, very quickly. They're like making a ton of progress, spending a lot of money and really just expanding very quickly. And they're gonna to look to invest in those companies that are very high growth potential. Now, value investors, on the other hand, are gonna look for companies that they feel are undervalued. So they're going to look for things like low price to earnings ratios or just stocks that they feel are kind of on sale. You know, the public isn't paying a ton of attention to them. And in general, they are just kind of undervalued stocks. And so they might buy these stocks that they think are undervalued and wait for them to kind of correct to what they feel the stock is actually intrinsically worth. So maybe they, they find a stock that is selling for $20, they think it's worth $30, so they'll buy it at 20 and hopefully wait for it to go up to 30 as the market realizes that this stock is in fact undervalued. As a capital appreciation investor, you can either invest for the long term or the short term. And so with growth investors, a lot of times they are actually investing for the short term. So they're looking at a company like Tesla, it's growing super fast. They want to kind of hop in on this rocket ship and then get off before the rocket ship explodes, you know? So they want to get those kind of short term gains from those stocks. Now, your growth investors on the other hand, typically have a longer term time horizon. So one of the most popular of which is Warren Buffett. So he is a huge proponent of value investing. He's always looking for undervalued companies to invest in. And then he holds those for decades, okay? He buys these things and holds on to them for a very long time. And one thing that's important to note is that there are very significant tax differences between your short-term investments and your long-term investments, okay? And the IRS kind of defines this as if you own a stock for longer than one year, so one year and one day or more, then it's going to be taxed as a long-term gain. If you own it for one year or less, it's gonna be taxed as a short-term gain. And short-term gains are actually taxed at your ordinary income tax rates, so relatively high whereas your long-term gains are going to be taxed at capital gains rates, which are lower than that. So if you follow a long-term investing strategy, you can potentially pay less in taxes, which is something to keep in mind if you're going to be making money on M1 Finance. Now, the third method is probably the least lucrative, but potentially the easiest to get started with, and that is opening an M1 spend checking account. So this is, like I said, the easiest way to make money on the platform because all you have to do is open a checking account and put money in there because on the M1 spend checking account, you can actually earn at the moment a 1% APY on your money in this account, which is currently about 20 times higher than the average savings account pays across the United States. Now this also allows you to take advantage of compound interest like we were talking about earlier, and is FDIC insured up to $250,000. So that means if M1 Finance goes under, the federal government has insured this account and has promised that they will pay you up to $250,000 of the money that you kept with M1 Finance. So if you have any amount under that, you're gonna be getting fully insured on your deposits on the platform. Now, the only downside to this method is that you have to be in the M1 Plus plan, which is a flat $125 per year. So if you're not on the M1 Plus plan, you're not going to have access to earning interest on your M1 spend account. You can still open one of these things. There's just not gonna be any interest associated with it. So you'll have to weigh that out. You have to look at the other benefits that M1 Plus does have to offer to really determine if this is something that's gonna make sense for you or if you'd rather opt for one of the first two methods. And obviously you can combine all these methods, use whichever ones you want in combination, switch between them, all of that good stuff. So it really just depends on your personal situation and which one of these methods really aligns with your goals and what you're trying to do. So overall, the answer to how to make money on M1 Finance is that you can either buy dividend stocks and take those dividends in cash or reinvest them. You can invest in capital appreciation stocks, so either looking for a growth strategy or a value strategy and invest in those stocks that you expect to go up in value over time or you can open an M1 spend chugging account if you have M1 plus and earn a flat 1% APY on any cash that you keep in that account. Now, if you wanna learn more about how to make money on M1 Finance, we have a full comprehensive guide over on our website, investingsimple.com. The best way to find that is to head on over to Google and type in how to make money on M1 Finance and click on the link for Investing Simple. We will see you over there.